Welcome to the 13th class of Art for the Ageless. Today, students, we are going to do basic pottery and sculpture techniques. We have one hour, and I want you to be able to take home two lovely art items. So let's get started. In front of you right now is a container of Play-Doh of your choice. Let us open it up. Having trouble, then push it up with your thumb and peel it outwards. I see you have already started. Woo, okay. The first thing we do when we get a piece of material is to explore it. We look at it, we touch it, and we smell it. I am so glad to see so many familiar faces here today. Thank you so much for coming. Okay, let's do the squeezing because our fingers at this point might just hurt a little bit, need a little bit of encouragement. So this is our first step in exploration. And we've smelled it. Mm. Okay, now we're doing the squeezing. So just take it in your hand, give it a good squeeze, pass it to the other hand. Good squeeze. And backward. We want to get it as pliable as possible. This is made from wheat. I hope none of you have a wheat allergy. And with polymer, which is a sort of a plastic. I'm using Play-Doh because I want to teach you the methods without it drying out. In the next step, we will use a salt uh, dough. Well, it's a do-it-yourself craft clay actually made from another material. We'll discuss that later. All right, let's get into this. We squeezed it. Let's stretch it. That's pretty good. Stretch, stretch, and it'll break. That's okay. We want to see what the material is capable of doing so that we can choose different projects and have fun. All right, the next thing we're going to do is to roll it. We can roll it in our hands, such as when you make dough with bread, and let's use the table, which has been protected by a plastic cloth and a parchment paper. So let's roll it on the table. Perfect ball. Incidentally, uh, anything you use for clay, do not use it straight on a bare table or a bare counter. It will leave some residue. That's why you always need a parchment paper, plastic, something under it. Okay, we have rolled it, and now we're going to flatten it. Some people get violent and decide, <laughs> oh, I know you're not gonna get violent, uh, and throw the clay, but that's fine. Oh, this one is bouncing. It bounces because it has plas a polymer in it, you know? So anyway, I didn't, well. Okay, so the next time you hit the table, hold on to it so it doesn't bounce back. You say, well, what are we doing this for? Well, we're practicing. Uh, this is called wedging. Uh, when you're using real clay, you have to wedge the clay because it might contain air bubbles. And you want to get them out because eventually people put the clay in a kiln. And if there's air bubbles, then it will explode in the kiln. So, all right. And now we're going to flatten it with the palm of the hand, flat down. And push it out. And push it out just like a pancake. Now that we've gotten it there, let's take our tongue depressor 
and we're going to cut it. So let's cut it in half. So that you have two equal halves. Okay. Now let's cut that half in fourths. At this point, if it's being done with children, we tell them one quarter, one quarter equals a half, two halves equal a whole. And they say, pizza. <laughs> <laughs> so then they might go about pulling things off and putting a little pepperoni here or there, and they start to play with it that way. Well, that's fine. You learn that, you pass it on to your grandchildren because this is the most fun kids have is working with their hands. The best thing about it, it goes right back into that ball again. All right, let's roll it and flatten it again because we're going to practice with a few of our tools. This is called a stylus. A stylus has two ends uh, this one is usually done for beading in uh, nail nails. Let me put this over here. And poke at it. Okay, so we're going to poke. Oh, I like this. This is like making a pie. So you can poke around. So, so now you're going to start to learn how to make the decoration. If you take your stylus and you whirl it like this, of course you will get a bigger hole. All right, I'm going to flip it over so I have a clean side because I want to take my stick. Everyone should have a wooden stick. And I want to draw it in. And now I want to twirl it around. If I were making Christmas decorations, I would say, okay, this might be a heavy decoration, but I could hang it. Anything with a hole could get hanged. Uh, if you were making jewelry with your grandchildren, you would simply roll into little balls and drive a stick through it and roll it again to get your hole. Then after it dries, of course, then you would color them and string them. Lots of fun uh, doing variations. But we don't make necklaces with Play-Doh. We do it with the craft clay, which we'll do in a minute. Okay, so we've caught, we've poked it. Oh, we haven't twisted it yet. Okay, let's roll it this way. Now let's twist it. So, ooh, okay. Like a little croissant there. <laughs> okay, let's see. Groove. All right, groove. A groove is simply just take your hand. And you could simply groove with your finger. It's like a wave. Yeah, this is a groove. Now this comes in handy. If you feel you want to make a flat tray, you would do your grooving. And then you would turn it upward to try to make a uh, some kind of a tray. In the old days, we made ashtrays. You don't do that now because <laughs> nobody smokes. Seriously. All right, so we group. Oh, braiding. OK. Let's take it and divide it into three parts. OK, one, three. Nice long braids. We'll just do simple. 
When you're doing this, of course, you have to squeeze it at the top, in the middle. If you squeeze it too much in the middle, of course, it's going to split. But that's okay because you can put it back together very simply. Okay. I'm going to do this quickly. It doesn't have to be three braids. It could be just two. All right. So I have my braids. And, of course, we all know how to braid hair. So I'm going to do this down here so it doesn't fall apart. And you can intertwine it and braid it. Okay, waffle. Well, we're going to use our tongue depressor now, and we're going to flatten the dough on the table. So I want to show you the waffle. Simply take your tongue depressor, and you put a line straight across, as though you were cutting, but you're not really cutting it. And then you crisscross it. That's the waffle. What I'm trying to point in out is that you can decorate most things any way you want. I don't know how well that's showing up. So that's your waffle. We already did the thrust, uh, and we poked at it. You can also cut it with, I left a gold nail on your table. And you can cut the edges with this nail and pull out pieces. Let me sh show you. You can depress it like this. And working from the outside, and pull out. This again is good if you want to make a particular kind of a tray with a sharp uh, leaf edge. Now you can get as creative as you choose. You do not have to copy me. My former students know that I am all for you creating your own object, using your own imagination and creativity. Yes, you can also, I see a star coming out of this one. So the possibilities of decoration are endless. I'm going to carry through on this. By the way, if you do have any questions as we are going through the process, Please don't be shy. Raise your hand. Let me know. Questions? Nope. Okay. So I see that we can also use the stick, but it won't be as sharp. I think when you get home, a, sh a knife probably would be the best if you plan to do anything like that. All right. So you have a uh, more or less of a cookie cutter holiday. Christmas ornament, whatever. So yes, you can make, uh, uh, take your cookie cutters and have some fun, snowmen, whatever you find at the dollar store, and uh, color it, make decorations. Okay. All right, back again. Let's see what we didn't do. We did the thrust. Oh, the mold. <laughs> Okay, that's fun. Uh, let's roll it into a ball. Let's flatten it again. Okay, we know what we're going to do. Oh, I don't think this is big enough. We're going to stick our hand into it where the fingers are and push down. See if we can get a mold of our hand. Four fingers, whatever. Better than nothing. Oh, that's good. And a little tray of my fingers, and you just kind of turn it up at the end. 
No, that's dumb. Okay. <gasps> Imprint. Okay. Well, see, so there's a lot of things you can do with this Play-Doh. Uh, we're going to go on. We're still working with the Play-Doh. I've covered most of this. All right. We're going into shape now. So, pinch pot. Easy. Let's roll it into a ball. See, using the Play-Doh and bringing it back to a ball again uh, takes you away from that ego trip. You know, I, no, I can't destroy it. I have created something gorgeous. I can't. Oh, just destroy it. <laughs> do it again. You remember. <laughs> it's like painting. You know, you do a bad painting saying, oh, I can't destroy it. It's part of me. Oh, just slap it over. Do another one. Okay, here we are. Okay, pinch pot. Easy as pie. Hold it in your hands like this. Take your two thumbs and press in the center. Not too much. Don't forget you don't want to skinny out the bottom. Turn it in your hand. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. And when you're fairly happy that your sides are not too thin and not too thick, Place it back down on the table, and now you have to flatten the bottom, because if you don't, it's going to drip to one side. So you take your thumb or your fingers. Notice the dual action. Nobody can do this with one hand. You have to have this one going and this one. It's like playing the violin, <coughs> playing the piano. You need to use both hands. So as one hand caresses the side, the other hand goes in and helps to mold. It's like saying, okay, if I do this, you have to do this. Don't tell me what to do. I will tell you what to do. I'm the left hand. I'm the domination. Oh, anyway. So your body, it has to work together. You're creating something. And both fingers of the left and the fingers of the right. And it's telling you, oh, there's something. I have to fix that. So you go in with both hands. It's not like, oh, I can fix it with this one. No, you can't. You need the other one. And you're pushing down on the wall, on the top of the wall. And your thumb is pushing in. And then you can go in with both hands. And you keep turning it. Okay, this is called hand build. It is not thrown on the wheel. That wheel is a killer, okay? I was never good at the wheel. You could see things sliding this way and that way. I would look at the other students and everything was so perfect. Not me. Not me. Anyway, I pretended everything was fine, and I just kept going. And then he said, OK, now we're going to do hand build. And my hands went flying, because I could do it. I could do it. I could do it as well as anybody else. I could make animals. When the time came for, the, for him to photograph what he wanted, he chose me. And he did my work. So you see, you can shine at different things. You don't have to be perfect at anything. All right, there's my pinch pot. Now, if I wanted to, I could extend it so that it becomes a tray. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to push it down. Oh my gosh, you ruined the masterpiece. Yes, OK. And I'm going to do that leaf design that I that I had started and see if I can turn it upward. Because what I'm going to ask you is when we get to the uh, craft clay, uh, to choose if you want to do a pot, a tray, uh, or an animal, or a face. So, so there's only two 
uh, objects you'll be making. One will be your choice of what you feel you can do according to the material properties of that particular substance. Uh, and then the air dry clay uh, is a very permanent and a very uh, lovely material to work with. And that's why you have those little uh, jars of water and a, a Q-tip. Okay? All right. Let's get going. I'm going to make um, my, my uh, well, I already made this star. I sort of wanted to uh, make it more like a leaf. So I'm going to make them a little bit bigger. I wanted to do more hands-on rather than blah, 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 because uh, that's how we learn this. We learn by doing. Incidentally, when we get to the air dry, I just wanted to tell you before I forget that I bought a 25-pound uh, jar. And, f and then looked at the, the uh, two and a half pound they were also selling and found that it was less expensive to get the five pound. So what I'm saying is, if you plan to do this and maybe share it with your grandchildren as a Christmas gift uh, and you're using the air dry, buy, buy the large container. Okay, so here we have uh, more or less of a leaf design. As you can see, of course, that the leaves are falling down. So when you, if you're going to do something like this that needs propping, there's a paper towel on your desk, your table, that you can wrap around and prop, prop it up, okay? And then, of course, if you want to think to yourself, okay, I want the leaves to go this way. I want to get fancy. Okay, so get fancy. All right, so well, I, I want even fancier, what can I do? All right, well, see what your stylist can do. Uh, maybe you can make little dots going this way. Uh, in a circle. Use whatever instruments you have. Well, let's see, I wonder what this would do. Nothing, okay. See what that can do. Maybe you, you can take your tongue depressor and press it down more. Be careful of one thing. Don't thin out your bottom. Okay? Don't thin it out. Because if you do that, then you're going to find that when you lift it up, uh, it will tear and it will be left at the bottom. When it dries, let it dry a few days this way and then turn it over and let it dry from the bottom, okay? All right, let's see what else we have. Okay, the, uh, the pinch pot we just did, we're on to the coil. The coil you see is in pieces, so that the first thing we do is we need to divide uh, it up so that we have our bottom and about four pieces of coil. Uh, we already did this tray and we already did the broad base uh, with the, the leaf. So let's do the coil. Take your dough and divide it into, let's say, thirds, okay? So roll it out so that you get a good eyeball on three, okay? Okay, one, three. All right, let's see how that works. I'm going to take this one, make it a ball. I need a good thick base. Rolling it and flattening. Take the other two, divide them into half. So now you have your circle and you have four pieces. I'll wait a minute for that. How are we doing so far? If you're comfortable at what we're doing, please raise your hand. Okay, pace good? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> I never know. 
All right, I'm going to make a little ball and I'm going to start making the coils. Okay. Little snakes. Okay. I, I don't know if it's going to fit around. I have no idea. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it as evenly as I possibly can. And if I just have to judge, that's all. Okay, now I place it down. Perfect. Okay, so that's going to work. I squeeze together. Press it down a little bit. Okay. We okay so far? We have one coil and a base. Now, there are things you can do from here. You can bring the base up so it attaches to the bottom. Uh, you can use the tongue depressor and slide it under and kind of tuck it up. Again, both hands are working. Nobody's fighting. You're trying to smooth the bottom coil. I'm the, I said the bottom, into the bottom coil. You're trying to make an attachment. If I were working on the real clay, then I might be adding water at this point. I'd like to try to do this with a minimum of adding any uh, water in the last stage of the regular air dry clay, just to minimize the amount of mess uh, for you. I think it's very important to get that bottom adhered. All right, we're going to take and do the next coil. So you have a pretty good idea of how much you need to complete this project. Okay. If you had any pain in your fingers at the beginning, I'll bet you anything you don't have that much in it right now. Okay? This is excellent, excellent for your hands. Okay, let's try and have it reach around. How many completed their first coil? Raise your hand. Wonderful. Okay, let's go for the second one. There we go. Well, that one didn't quite reach. If it doesn't quite reach around, then it's okay because then you might say that you're starting to get more narrow as you reach the top of the vase. Again, you can take an instrument and you might try to connect it with the stylus or not. Okay, I'm going to go on to my third one. I'm watching my clock because I want it to be completed and I'm not. Okay. So we've also showed you the dual action of the finger placement. So as soon as we finish this, we're going to go into shape. I want you to have plenty of time to do the other two projects. Okay, here we go. This is the third one. Doesn't quite make it, so I need to stretch it out a little bit more. more. Okay. Goes on a little bit better. Now it's getting higher and deeper. I have one more to go. Are we okay? Oh, I see some nice ones. I see some nice ones. Sean, are we able to get any close-ups? Yeah, okay. We're going to do just a few close-ups of your project and your hands, so hold on just a second. Fun, fun, fun. 
Oh, that one is nice, yeah. Beautiful. Good for you. Good for you. How's our little friend back there? <laughs> Wave your arms, sweetie, so we can see you. We have a little friend here today. Oh, she's doing a good job. Doing a good job. Tell everybody your name again, sweetheart. Maya. Oh, okay. Maya. All right, we're going to put our last one on. Like I told you, it might start to close up at, at the top, but that's nice too. Accidents are nice. Nobody makes a mistake. We just have little accidents that make things better and more interesting. So my pot is, yeah, sure, it's lopsided. So what? I didn't say I was going to make a perfect pot. OK, so here we have our pots, nice and deep. And it, once we translate it into something more permanent, it's going to be beautiful. OK, I'm going to do something now that you're not going to like. OK, you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to smash it. You smashed my masterpiece. My masterpiece. Yeah. You have a big ego, OK? Quiet. It <laughs> Goodbye. OK. We're learning. <laughs> learning. All right, here's the next step. Okay. Come on, get over there. Is that the last one? OK, last sheet. Uh, pull out add-on. As I've told you be yo, uh, as I've told you before, the add-on requires water and everything, okay? It requires that you take the two pieces and, and that you score each. I'm just going to slam this for you and show you. Okay, if you want this to adhere to that and you're using real clay, you have to take one half and score it into a waffle like this. Then you have to put slip on it. Slip is clay plus water. And slam it together, okay? And, and that's glue, okay? That's your glue. All right, we're not going to do that with the Play-Doh. What we're going to do, hmm, I think I'm very, I'm so tempted to do this one because this one's more fun. Okay, let's make a ball. And... Let's stick the tongue depressor in it. Oh, she's getting crazy. Okay, there. Okay, so. You ready? What are you going to do now? <laughs> I am going to squeeze your face. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, so you take, you might rest it in your hand as you would. And with your two fingers, you're the ones you're using, and you're going to squeeze his nose out. I have some clowns in my class. OK. And then you push it in for the brow and stick it up under the, no the, uh, the nostrils and pinch and pull. You know, we're not making Pinocchio or anything, but, you know. And then take anything, your stick, and kind of groove in the eyes. <laughs> and we need more here, so we're going to make a little mouth in there. Ha ha, he's smiling. Okay. And there's your chin. It's that old toothless guy. He's not perfect. That man is. Okay, and then we're going to give him the ears. Just the ears remember are between the eyeballs and the bottom of the nose, so we're just going to squeeze out some ears. Nothing fancy. 
I gave you a paper earlier, sort of like a summary of all the rest of the classes. And I just wanted to point out quickly at this point, since I remember, uh, to prepare for each of the classes, sometimes it's going to be necessary to review prior lessons. And you will find them on the, uh, the link that I wrote on the paper. Okay, and uh, the prior classes will help to enhance your experience, especially for next time. Okay, so, and if you want to, then you can give him hair. You can just pull out, give him some hair. Make him crazy as anything you want. Just, you know, just go like that, sticky. You know, you should cut your hair, you look like a slob. Okay. The room got so quiet. You're focusing. Good, good, good. Okay. Hold them up. Let me see for a second. <laughs> They're not lollipops. Hold them up. Ah, oh, I see. I see some nice. All right. Well, you're just starting. You're gonna go home with this, and yeah, yeah. All right. Destroy him. Destroy. Okay, we. I'm running. Oh, I'm running bad on my time, so I'm going to be really fast. Uh, okay, turtle. Okay, tur okay, turtle. Pinch pot. Pinch pot. Pinch pot. Okay. Start off with a pinch pot for his shell. Then see if you can see him. Okay. This is the inside, this is the outside. All right, now I am going to take with the whole hand and I'm going to pull out his head. Turtles don't like that. That's okay. So you're going to give him, pull out the head, pull out the front paws. Try to maintain the circularity of his well, actually, they're not perfect circles. They're sort of like oval-shaped. Pull out his foot, other paw. Then if you want, you turn him and fix his head. He's such a sweetheart. I have three turtles at home. They're almost 20 years old. Oh, they're so sweet. They grew from a little tiny thing, and now you can't even hold them. It's huge. I keep them in my bedroom. God. Okay, now let's go down to the tail. And the ta Males have longer tails than females. That's how you can tell. And their front claws are also much longer. So my guys are three guys, and they just don't get along with each other, so they have to be in separate tanks. Okay, we're starting to bring more of the material to the hind part because their back uh, legs are very uh, larger and they're stronger. This gets flat, there he goes. And the other one. say, well, that's too much. And then I need to go back up here because I want to make sure I have got everything worked out. Okay, so a nice little fella. Okay, little fella, let's see what you'd like. Uh, well, maybe um, some scales. Scales going around. So as much as you know of an animal, you can uh, put it out. So basically, uh, 
Okay, so most of the animals will be just about like this. Nice, okay. Oh, I like your turtles. They're nice turtles. Yeah. Did we get any turtles, Sean? Okay, finish up your turtle. Sean wants to take a cup. Oh, he's so cute. They are, you know, I love turtles because they're like little babies. They just, you know, just so cute. And when you put your finger on the side of the aquarium, they'll go after you. They don't care. I said, after 20 years, you don't recognize me? <laughs> no, I don't. You look like a fish. Give me that. I hate to say this. You know what I'm going to say. Just smash it up. Destroy it. OK, did we get enough, Sean? Is there anybody who wants to get a shot before we destroy? Are we OK? <laughs> Des OK, destroy quickly, or else we'll never get the other projects done. Um, mostly any of the other creatures, now I can't go into all the creatures, okay? Most of the other creatures you can get done by making sort of a pair, okay? Kind of a pair where you get a small point at the top for the head and you can draw making a bird now. Uh, and the most of it will get toward the bottom. So where you're getting this business, okay? Where you get your tail. So just, yeah, just proportion the clay uh, however you expect that you want to. So basically, yeah, there's a bird. You know how to do this. Look at it, use your imagination. <gasps> want to start doing something for real now? Yeah. Okay, yeah, we better hurry up. Okay, smash. Okay, now when you go to put it back in, of course, uh, do it this way, it won't go as far as a ball. What I'm talking about is putting it back. Okay, so stick it back, push it down a little, cap it up, and uh, at your table you'll find, oh, right. <sighs> Would you please write your name on the yellow name tag that I've <laughs> so laboriously stapled and have totally forgotten about right now? Just, yeah, write your name, share, share the marker, write it straight across. That way I'll know uh, who attended today so I can make up a roster for uh, next time. Okay, so. Do you want last names? Uh, no, just your first name. You're going to be friendly. Okay, so goodbye that. Okay, the next thing that we need is the do-it-yourself dough, and it's in the bag. You're going to share amongst each other. So let's take it out. And oh yes, you could do it yourself if you have patience and you like sticky hands. All right. This was made with cornstarch, baking soda, and water. It was boiled, it was a pain to make, uh, of course because I did it wrong a couple of times, uh, and it retained moisture in the plastic bag which made it sticky and this morning I had to go over them all and put more baking soda in them. If you find that your hand is at all sticking to the dough, which it should not, because I went over each one of these. But if it is, there are two mats over there with baking soda on them. Simply take it, slam it on the baking soda, and uh, yeah. So if you feel, ah, oh, this is too sticky for me, I don't like this, go over there and just slam it down, okay? I invite you. Uh, if not, let's go ahead and, mine is getting too sticky. I think I got the bad one. I'm looking at that longing. Okay, uh, excuse me. Off camera. Now, what you do is you take your hand and you slam it down, and you slam it, slam, slam, slam. 
What are you doing? Are you going to take a picture of me? No. Yes. You are? Oh, okay. Gee. Take, take your hand and slam it into, and then mold it again, knead it again. Ah! Okay. <laughs> Actually, this is fun. <laughs> you can't have fun. You're the teacher. Yes, I can. Okay, I'm happy now. Okay, now I'm happy. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Okay. No, I'm serious. Any of you want to go over there and, and just get, you know, dough dirty? Okay. We're going to go over time. I just know it's going to happen. Oh, there she goes. All right. All right, decide. Let's decide. Okay. Do we want to make a, a pinch pot? We're doing something now. You, you're making a choice right now what you're going to do. Are you going to make an animal with this? Or are you going to make a pinch pot? Or are you going to do a coil? You know what? I don't like the feel of this. <laughs> this is too sticky. Um, I think I'm just going to make a pinch pot. No, no, it'll drip on me. I am going to make a coil. OK. OK, coil. Divide it into three parts. How many decided what they wanted to do? How many are panicking? <laughs> okay. Okay. Three parts. No, you just did the right. Yeah. Will this be paintable once the prize? Yes, that's what we're going to do. Uh, by the way, I have made, I've cut up little boxes over there. Uh, enough for everybody. You put your, uh, your Play-Doh in it, take it home, keep it. Uh, the other two projects you put in the, in the box, take them home. Please bring the box back, okay? Uh, you can uh, get a, a shoe box uh, uh, for when you bring it back the next time and just leave that with me because I have another class that we're doing the same thing. Uh, okay, so when you bring it back, not next week, but the week after. It has plenty of time to dry. We'll use tempera paint, and you have two projects to paint. So uh, it'll just flow one into the other. All right. So I need four, four parts. OK. Still sticky. I have to decide if I'm ever going to do this clay dough again. Ugh. OK. So all right, I'm going to make my base of my coil pot, flatten it. I don't expect to get too big. Let me give you, a, show you an example. Okay. This is my example. <laughs> okay, this pinch pot, uh, kind of a flat tray. Yeah, they're all cracked because that's what the material it does, it cracks. Good luck. Okay. This is my coil, little one, big one. And yeah, it's just really cracked right straight through. You know, if it cracks, you can always fill it in with uh, Elmer's glue. It, it has a nice salty, salty texture to it. And then when you paint it, of course, you can make something nice. All right. OK, back. OK, let's do the coil. All right, I'm going to try to do this as fast as I can. Time is of the essence. And I'm going to try to do it mainly with my fingers. How many are doing a pinch pot? OK, how many are doing a coil? All right. How many are attempting animals or faces? Oh my gosh, you are so brave. Are you doing a bird? Oh, I'm trying to do a dog. I don't know about this. Oh, okay, so I'm, I'm sorry, I should. It, the, the bird and the dog, uh, I, I should have got an example of that dog. Maybe I can backtrack. Well, I've already showed you how to do the coil. Maybe that would be a good idea about now. 
And remember, don't get your bottom too uh, thin because that's really bad because then it'll pull straight up, okay? Come on, fingers, do your work. Oh, God, back at the wheel. Okay, I'm gonna just, yeah, besides that, you have to need to turn it. Okay, I finished making my lopsided coil, and that's okay because you can, you know, you can make an indent. I had a coil method that I, I did some funny thing at the top. I should bring my, my pottery next time and show you. Okay, so this is my horrible thing. Since I did not show you the dog or how to do that, I'm going to crush the life out of this. It's still sticky. I hate that. I'm going to do a pear thing, and I'm going to see if I can quickly... When you do an animal like a cat or a dog, again, it's the same as the bird in which you get the head out first, and then you try to shape, you know the shape of the dog, the boxy little face. See that little face? God, you're sticky. And the little ears out there. Okay. And then as he progresses down, you want to make sure you have enough for his rear end and his chest, and you begin to pull up. I want this for the hind legs. I want this for the front legs. And I want to squeeze out half for each of the legs. The important thing if you are making an animal is that he be able to sit. So going to pull out the tail and I'm going to take the bottom and I'm going to curve the legs so that they sit underneath him. That is the only thing that you can do. Oops. Okay. The only thing. I tried, I tried making a camel. I tried long legs. Mm-mm. When it dried, of course, one of the legs was too long, so I tried to shorten it this way, shorten it that way. You know what happened, of course, it broke. A, a good thing with real clay, you can dump it into a bag with water, it completely dissolves, all right? Okay, so anyway, I have finished my, my dog. I hate this do-it-yourself clay. I will not do it ever again because I don't do it right. But at least he got life all right, am I going to make you that? I'm going to stay that way? All right, let me see what I can do. Okay, there you go. Be good to mama. Okay. Okay, good enough. What the? Mm -mm. So, did it, did it stick all over the place? Ugh, disaster. Okay, let's go from disaster to discovery. Uh, Leave it alone. Uh, put, it, put it on the, um, the piece of parchment paper and set it to one side. And did you get your clay ball? No? OK, clay ball. All right. Uh, Sarah, we have Sarah here. No, Sarah left. Oh, Sarah. Oh, OK. Well, Sean, would you be kind enough? Make sure everybody gets, uh, every table gets the two so that they can share them, yeah. Okay, here's our last project, and we are definitely going over 10 minutes because we're not gonna make this. I want you to have some better success than something that never happened. Oh, God, you're so sticky. Mama put too much water in it. I wanna show you my bird. This is my bird. And, of course, he wasn't going to stay. So what I did was I stuck two metal legs. 
So, and that made it so that he would stay. Good birdie. Yeah. And as you see, the tail, of course, was going to, to crumple and bend. So I put a little bit of paper toweling under it and put it into a container and make sure he would be OK. My favorite is uh, from a cooking mistake. I cooked the uh, cornstarch before I cooked anything else. And it turned out very rough. But I liked it because it gave my little bear a kind of a furry, fuzzy uh, exterior. I don't know if we can get a close-up of the, of the texture. Probably not. Anyway, so he's standing up on his hind legs. And it, yeah, you can see the rough texture of the bear. Mm -hmm. And that was because I made a mistake cooking uh, the cornstarch, which almost spoiled over onto the floor. <laughs> I got to the sink in time. Come on, give me some credit. Let's see. What oh, here's my. My turtle, OK, here's the turtle. And uh, the texture on his back. <laughs> so that's my guy. I hope you're doing, not just listening to me, I hope your hands are whizzing uh, on this new air dry clay. Do you want us to do a second piece? You can do whatever you desire. You are going to do definitely. OK, where is that, Clayton? All right, here we go. What do you want to do? You want to make, uh, make an animal on this one. Uh, you will be fine. This is good and firm. It's not going to be sticky. Uh, if you, uh, this is the water I'm talking about and the Q-tip, or you can tip your little finger in it. Uh, who does not have one of these? We all OK? All right, good. All right, here we go. Uh, this is going to dry quickly, so we're going to do this as fast as we can. What would you like to make? What would you like to make? Try an animal? OK. How many want to do a turtle? Dog? Cat? Don't care. OK, raise your hand if you don't care. You just want to make something today. Bird. Bird. OK, bird. OK, let's make another bird. All right, sitting bird. Does everybody have the clay? OK. All right, so let's. This is real air dry clay. This is Crayola. The bucket, uh, the five pound bucket, is about $13 and a. Uh, Half of that costs you more than that. So that's, you really should buy the big bucket, OK? All right, so the bird, we're going to start off with a long form. And we're going to start with the head sticking out. And we're going to make the beak. Did I finish? No, I guess so. OK, so try to make his little head as smooth as possible. OK. Pulling him down. And this is going to require more strength on your part, because I can feel this dough. It's, the cl it's clay, and it's going to harden quickly. I can just feel it in my hands. OK, we're going to try to push to make that tail. The most important thing at this point is to get that tail out. And also, we need a little bit for the wing. So I'm going to pull some of the, the clay from the tail and put it onto the wing. As I've told you before, I'm going to have to add on. So I'm going to have to take my nail and score it this way and that way. I'm going to have to score the side of the bird quickly. 
I have a lot of things I can score with. I'm just roughing it up. That's basically what I'm doing. I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to put it along. And you'll see you're making slip immediately. Can you see that? And then you do it on the other side. And then you're pressing it in and trying to smooth it. You need to keep watching what you're doing. Don't get too wet. You start to get too wet, you're going to get upset. All right, so I've got, seemingly, I've got one wing. OK, let's try for two. So I'm going to pull from the other end try to get some of that wing out. And I notice it has a curve already, so I'm lucky. Turn him around. Score him again. Score the wing. little bit of water to make a little slip. Slip again is like glue. Attach the wing. I might want to use a tool to mold the wing to the body. If I'm unable to do it with my fingers, I will take this and use a tool. You have a lot of tools at your disposal. And if you take the nail, I notice that you can simulate feathers using this nail. So I'm going to start taking the nail, and I'm striping the creature because I want this feather effect. Now I've got to finish the tail. It's going to be rough going. I need to put him down. I need to bend him so that he starts to stand. Well, not stand, but he doesn't slip. All right, so if you need then to take your towel and put it under here so that he remains in an upright but he is sitting, and there's nothing to do about it. So I'm going to flatten his tail, hoping I don't get it too thin, taking my nail, and I'm going to start striping with the nail to simulate feathers. I don't know if you can see all of that. Yeah. OK. So, anyway, oh, I don't think your nose would be turned up like that, duck. Is that a little bit better? Okay. We're about five minutes over, but that's okay. Uh, that's a nice bird, Jane. Yeah. I wasn't sure if I should bring wire to make little legs for everybody. I didn't. I do like your, let's see who's that. Margaret. Margaret, is it? Margaret? Oh. Mary. Yeah, I, I like the dog. You did a good job on the dog. I'm trying to see everybody's. It's a little hard. Sean, do we want to take any more yes. one shots? OK, we're, Sean's going to go around. Please put your, your final touches on so that he can take photographs of your, your final projects. Okay. 
They say that you can also shave into these, but I don't believe them. <laughs> that, is, that one's cute. Was that Lisa? She's cute, cute little chick there. I would definitely encourage you to, to get, oh, that was so cute. You know, you might say, well, oh, that doesn't look exact. We didn't even get into whales, did we, or, or dolphins or other creatures. Oh, that is, is that a penguin? Is that, <laughs> Anna? Oh. <laughs> oh, cute, yeah, oh, cute penguin. I love baby penguin. See that, you don't need me. You don't need me. Oh, that one is lovely. You put your own self in that. You, did, you guys did a great job today. Thank you so much. And remember, next time you come, we're going to be doing figure drawing, and we're going to uh, clothe the models with uh, pastel uh, draperies. And please review figure drawing number one. Uh, it's with that link, you'll see the article, uh, and it's after the scroll, uh, after the article, just to get a basic uh, foundation. Oh, uh, you, you really did wonderful. See, how many people do we have here today? Two, four, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven, oh, 13, 14, about 14 people. Good, we had a full house. Let them dry carefully. Be sure to turn them. If you have made a bird of any sort, wait until a, a couple of days drying this way. And then when you're uh, very confident, then take him and place him in the other direction to dry from the other uh, view. But be very careful that you don't lose any of uh, the, the stiffness that you want. You don't want them kind of drooping over, but any style is, I see a lot of modern styles. How did our little friend uh, do? How did you do, sweetheart? What did, you, what did she do? Mia, is it Mia? Maya. Maya. Maya, let's see what you did. What you got? Uh huh. Good. Did you have fun, Maya? Okay, good. Glad to hear. <laughs> That's what we're all about. All right, I think, Sean, it's 20 minutes. Uh, if you uh, need to stay, uh, about another 10 minutes, okay. Please do take a box uh, from the table to take your treasures home. Uh, I would like to, I would like to collect the other items, the, uh, the stylus, the, the wood, the nail, and of course my little plastic jar. So uh, take. You really want that? Oh, God. Uh, oh, okay. It's supposed, okay, it's supposed to be one, uh, one cup of baking soda, a half a cup of cornstarch, and three quarter uh, cup of water. But I would do a little bit less on that water because it's the water that makes it sticky. And you, the way I found out works the best is the cold, the cold water in the pot, then the one, uh, the, uh, the one cup of the baking soda, dissolve it, then the half a cup of cornstarch, dissolve it, and then add, uh, well, no, that's it. You have the water, you have everything. Then put it over, and when it boils, uh, start a three-minute countdown. It'll turn to like mashed potatoes. 
it'll start to pull up from the sides. And at that point, you need to take it off from the heat, uh, keep stirring it constantly, or it'll burn on the bottom. Turn it on to parchment paper, let it cool down, and uh, after that, that's it. You've got it. I would really strongly recommend Crayola air dry. <laughs> Don't hurt yourself like that. It doesn't always turn out, you know. I use too much water. Okay. Um, all right. So, uh, Sean, I think, is there anything else? No, I think that's it. Did I? You want to all right. Next week, figure drawing pastels. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye.